allow my dear subscribers and watchers, viewers, not watchers. Today I'm solving Nebus Welcome Round Div1 plus Div2 rate T shirts. Uh, Gleb's HP is uh, Gleb Yevstropov, I guess. So he is a very known coordinator and problem setter. So I'm glad to solve his round. And not only his and also Zlobobers, Maxim Ahmedov. They are both known coaches in competitive programming. Uh, but they are kinda retired. I mean, they haven't been doing anything in Kodi Forces for a long time, I guess. For example, if we look at their blocks, uh, Zlobobber's block is five years old. I mean, uh, the last post was five years ago, and Gleb's post also was five years ago, and now they are making a round, so it's nice. So it's kind of 20 seconds till the beginning and we are totally ready. Visual Studio is open. I guess, I hope nothing will prevent me from doing my best. Oh no, Kodi Forces doesn't work. Oh no, what is it? Nothing works, nothing works. Okay, I can solve problem B. First, since I can't read problem A. No, I can read problem A. Okay.
Hmm. Ah, he can skip a move. If he can keep him off, it's pretty easy problem. So it's like... Uh, We read A and B, and we say that uh, first of all we can replace A with abs of A, B abs of B, and if A is greater than B, then we can swap A and B. So now A and B are non-negative, and B is greater than A. Yes, and now I guess. I guess it's something like so first two A moves we go only uh, we go like diagonally yes and then we need to make B minus A moves to the right which we can do in this time Okay, so we can see out. Two times B. Minus A is not equal to B. I think uh, that's it. Let's see. Seven, eight, eleven, nine, fifteen. Yes. What's wrong? Did I submit it? I didn't submit. Why? Excellent. Oh no. Of course. Mm. This is greedy.
So we want to calculate ans and print ans. <clears throat> How do we calculate ans? So we have some current current pack and some vaccines in it and uh, its expiration time. So we take our ti so if current pack equals zero or uh, so first of all we need to take uh, when we the latest time he can get the vaccine or vaccine i don't know vaccine vaccine it is ti plus w so if expiration is less than can then we need to open the new pack so first of all plus ans current pack equals um, k and can expiration equals can plus d and now we say that minus minus current pack and that's okay Three 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 two. No, why? So here I have a wrong answer. So what's wrong here? We have K. Ah. We open it at moment one to vaccinate patient one. Why expiration is 18? Ah! Yes.
It was stupid. Again, I didn't submit my solution. Why? Why didn't I submit my solution? What's happening? Something is lagging. Pull your lock. So we have a wheel with sectors from 0 to n minus 1. The winning sector is determined by a static arrow pointing at one of the sectors. Okay, so we need to choose some number f such that such that p plus uh, okay, let's read nxp and we need to choose such number f such that f times f plus 1 half is divisible by n so it is equal 0 modulo n uh, so it's kind of quadratic equation. So squared plus f equals minus 2p modulo n, modulo 2n. So like plus 2p equals 0 modulo n and we can do it in o of n time we can do in do it in o of n time so actually we just iterate over all possible f but uh, since this is modular operation after we reach n we stop so f equals 1, f is at most minimum of n and p, plus plus f, if p plus f times f minus 1 plus 1 half uh, percent n is zero. We say that ants equals f plus one and break. And here we print ah oh, no 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 not f plus one f and break. So if ants equals zero we print no else we print yes E and we print F. No, we print only a, a string. No, yes, 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 no, yes, no, why?
Ah, it currently points at sector X. So it should be X, not P. Why did it write? Did I write P? Uh, why? It just doesn't send a solution. Why doesn't it send a solution? Why was it? Ah, I think it's because of long long. No, I have long long here. Why wrong answer? I don't understand. It's such an easy problem. Ah, 2N, I understand. It should be 2N. And again, it doesn't submit. Okay. It's a shame, it's a shame. have a binary matrix n times m each apartment is either one bedroom or two bedroom Two bedroom apartment has exactly two consecutive windows on the same floor. So, on each floor, we need to find the minimum and the maximum possible number of
field apartments. Field? Ah, it's it's called uh, occupied. Hmm. So the problem can be solved independently for each floor, but we need to do it. So in order to maximize the number of field apartments occupied, we actually need to maximize the number of zero, war, zero 01 apartments. Yes, and in the other case we need to minimize it, and it is not very hard. So we read and the name. Uh, we find in L and R not yes like this, and we print L and R in the end. So we do it n times. So what do we do here? So we have read this string S. Uh, and we find the number of different and same and we can do it greedily I guess can we do it greedily yes we can do it greedily okay so uh, first of all if j minus one is greater than last different and s j equals is not same as j minus one, then we say that last different is j and plus plus different. And the same goes about same. So if it is equal, then same. And what do we do here? And also we need to so if as j equals one we say plus plus on so now we need to find the formula so what is the minimum number so we have actually the minimum number is so what do we do
Hmm. So we have so many turned on windows, but we can decrease it. I think it's like this, and what about R? Now, first of all, we need to make same is maximum of same and minimum of same and M over 4. Yes, what about R? So we actually want to do either different numbers or numbers which are same. Yes, so Actually, we are okay if there are two zeros. If we want to maximize, we are okay to make two zeros. So different is not different. Different means there are maybe two zeros. Okay, so on minus two ones and how many two ones there were there were m over four minus different two ones seven ten three four and it will not send yes no, it's in. Okay, kind of worked. <coughs> Routing.
but maybe a problem E should be solved first. Ada operates a network. That consists of N servers and then a direct connections between them. So like a graph. By directional transmission transmission, so it's N directed graph. Ada knows that these M direct connections allow to directly or indirectly transmit information between any two servers in this network. We say that server V is a neighbor of server U if there exists a direct connection between these two servers. Servers. We are P. So for each server we choose one of its neighbors. It doesn't seem possible. It doesn't seem possible. But there is a graph where the answer is yes. How is that possible? Ah, it's not a tree. It's not a tree. And also the graph is not very large. And we need to find such a way that we from any server U can get to any other server V. So like if we go to the server AU, it becomes uh, something like a cycle. Yes, so there is a cycle from which we cannot get uh, out. If we go from U to A of U, we get to a cycle from which there is no escape. So the answer is yes, if there is a cycle in the graph which is connected to all vertices. And the solution is we just root everything to this cycle. And it should be a simple cycle. Okay. And since the 
since n is 20, it's it should be solved like with some brute force of all possible cycles or something like that. Two seconds. Okay, I think we just need to iterate over all like paths. I think we get something like n squared times 2 to the n. 
n squared times 2 to the n and also times n. So n cube times 2 to the n. It's like 8000 million. This is too much. And maybe not cycle, maybe just one edge, which is neighbor to everything else. This is also possible.
I got something. So if I start with vertex 20 and I didn't find any cycle, then after that I do not need to start uh, at, uh, use vertex 20 because it is over. So actually it will be faster. It will be faster. Oh no, but it, I'm so slow, guys. Okay, so we read N and M. Now we need to construct a matrix. Uh, yes, I think it's kind of bit set matrix. So we read X and Y. And we say that gx or equals 1 over i, gy or equals 1 x. Then we ask X and Y. No, not X and Y, but G. We print ans I plus one and space. And here we eliminate this. So now we need just find ans. So first of all we iterate So if ans is not empty, we return ans. And here we also return ans. Okay, what is find ans with? It means that we start with in vertex S and we do not use any vertices which are less than S. Okay. Nice. So here we make this thing. Uh, One moment. So we say ans end and vi one over s, I think.
No, I think it's like we need to make vi. Yes, like this. So this is the subset which we covered. And in the beginning, it is possible to cover empty subset. Here. Okay. So now we go through all subsets. What do we do here? So we take some subset i and we ask how can we extend it? How can we extend it? Uh, first of all, so oh, I need, I think we need to construct the sets of covered vertices. How is it done? So it's like the I covered. Uh, and here we say that here we say that C I or G equals C I or g or gg g, 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 g. maybe uh, we need to do like this to be sure so i mean if we want to cover set i with something we need to cover i and also we need to cover G, G, uh, we also need to cover j and all its neighbors and now we need to pass it to c okay great so first of all if We need to check if we already found the answer. How can could we find the answer? So we can find the answer if one one of the neighbors of S One of the neighbors of S is also one of the ends of the path VI. Okay, let's do it separately. So G S C I. So if ans is not empty, we return ans. Okay, then we say that we cannot stop right here, and in this case, we need to make one more edge.
So we start. In vertex mask equals V zero, not not V zero bit, but V I. So while mask, we try to do something. What can we do? So we say that last vertex is mask last vertex is CTZ of mask mask minus equals one last vertex. What do we do then? We say that we try to add one more edge. So next mask is first of all we can use G of last vertex, but we cannot use vertices which are already visited. So first of all we need to end one over S minus one. So only little vertices. And also we can only use uh, vertices which are not used. Ah, it's just like uh, not I. Okay, so we have some next vertices, ne next mask here. And here we go. So we say while next mask, we say that int next vertex equals built in CTZ of next mask. Next mask minus equals one over next vertex. And then we see that a V of I or next vertex, yes. or equals next vertex. Yes. Okay, now we need to write this function. So we have the graph, the vertex, these strange sets and also last vertex. So what do we try to do? Ah, uh, so it's like set or set. So we take all neighbors of our set. And if all neighbors of our set is not equal to uh, 2 to the n minus 1, if they are not equal, then we return nothing. Okay, so we have covered all vertices. What then? We also need to try to close our root.
So if it's not vi, ah, it's int. So if our no, it should not be our set. It should be our set or one over s like this. Then if our set equals zero, then we also return the i because we cannot do anything. Okay, so we have covered all vertices and there is definitely a cycle. Ah, we also need to find the last vertex, which is good. Last mask equals what? So we take pi. So this is the set of vertices which can be last. But we can only take the vertices which are neighbors of S. So if not last mask, we also say that we stop. Okay. And finally, we construct the answer. We construct the answer, and how do we do it? No, it should be not last vertices here, it should be the whole V, because we need to reconstruct the answer. So last vertices is the our set. Okay, we reconstruct the answer. So there are two parts. First of all, from each vertex out of this cycle, we need to go to this cycle. Somehow. Yes, so So we say reach I So we need to reach one of the good vertices Uh, so reach is the set of vertices which can be reached. First of all, we say that if i and our set and Really, our set contains i, then we say that reach i equals true. And here we say that DFS of i and reach and g. So DFS says that we and also ans. So DFS is true if we could reach the cycle. So if we already reached the cycle, then we just say return true. 
What do we do now? We iterate over all vertices, which is G size. So if G V contains I Let me think. No, it should be in the opposite order, I think. And I think we need to start in the cycle, in the cycle, and go into the other vertices. So, no. So here we see, so first of all, we only use visited, which is initially false for all vertices. And here, So this is just cycle. Let's just do it for cycle. Okay, and also we need VB visited. Okay, so if cycle I, we see DFS of I. What do we do with this DFS? First of all, we said that visited of V is true. Now we iterate over all neighbors. Okay, i is a neighbor of v. So also we need to check if it is not visited. And it should be not in the cycle. In this case, We say that ans of i is v and dfs of i reach visited g ans. Okay. And now we need to reconstruct our cycle. And this is kind of problem. This is kind of problem. But we need to do it. So first of all, we need to find the last vertex. For example, we can just take built-in CTZ of last mask. Okay, then we say that ans of last vertex equals 
s and then while last mask we do something so we iterate over all vertices and we ask for several things First of all, I should lie in last mask. This is the first condition. Also, there should be an edge between I and last vertex. And also, it should be possible It should be possible to finish it if we start in C No, not C It should be possible if we take of the possible last mask and there should be I. So if all these three conditions are satisfied, we can say that ans of I is last vertex, last mask equals possible last mask, Oh, this is so technical, guys. And last vertex equals i. Excellent. Excellent, but I hate such problems. What's happening? Ah, DFS didn't return the value. I don't need, do not need it. Okay. But why? Next vertex is 27? Why so? Why? How is it possible? S is 5, I is 0, I 
Last vertex is 5. Ah, it should be trailing. Yes. It's too slow. Ah, so we have some problem here about our mask because we cannot continue it. So what's the problem? So there should be several conditions. First of all, last mask should be should contain Okay, let's start over. Last mask is two. So what is the graph? The graph? Ah, the graph should be two five. Like should be like two five. Ah, it should be like. Okay, it should be one four. Yes, it should be 1, 4, and S is 4, isn't it? Yes, S is 4, so it should work. So possible mask is 0. And there are several conditions. V0 equals 16. Ah, possible last mask should be this. Yes. So first of all, again, it should contain I. I should be 
connected with last vertex and possible last vertex, possible last mask. should be able to end with i. Yes. And again, some problems. So last okay let's just print everything this is zero why g last vertex why last vertex is one not for ah Five, one, five, two, four. Mm -hmm. It's correct. Here we have yes two three two. Two three two. Correct. And here we have yes four three one one. Y11, one, one? it's not correct. Ah, it's correct. Yes, it's kind of correct. Hmm, interesting. And here we have no. It's correct, but I also need one more test, for example. like 12 No. I 
four by five five two. It should be yes, but it is not. What happened? Why? Now it's not very fast, is it? What do we have here? Last mask, third last mask, thirty-four. It's like five and two. I don't get it. And also, S is seven. Why 34? 34 is something very strange. I think I need a bit. I think I need some stress. I think I need some stress. Yes, I need to make it fast also. Okay, so what do I do? Firstly, I need to check that this is correct. Oh, I'm lazy. I'm actually lazy to do it.
Okay, so I have created a test. And here I need to check the test. So how do I do it? I think I will just do the following for int e equals 0 e less than n plus plus i for int j equals 0 j less than n plus plus j. We need to check that the condition is true. How do we do it? So int k equals i l 0 l is at most n plus plus l. We do this the following thing. What do we do here? We say that if k equals j or in test k lies j, then we say that good equals true. Else we say that k equals ans of k. So if output size equals no zero return true. If answer size is not equal to n return false. If ans is less than zero or ans i is at least n we return false so now we say that well good equals false so if not good return false Return true. It's crazy, guys. It's just crazy. Okay, let's try little tests. For example, two. 
No, I don't like it. I also need to write here Ah, what? Okay, so, but it is not true. Why? Why did it happen? Ants should not be empty in this case. Oh no. Ah! Okay. So now everything is fine. Let's try three. Everything is also fine. I guess. Let's try four. And again, everything is fine. So let's try five. Let's print the test. Ah, oh no. no. Uh, I should change. Ah, here is okay. Yes, so I can continue. So So if ans i and j then test fair dot in place back i and j and here I say that
Yes, so we have this test. 5, 1, 2, 3. And for some reason it said that we win. But why did it say it? It said no. Ah, it's not ANS, it's TEST. Okay, so this is some sort of test. Do I have some time? Not much. Okay, so there is indeed an answer, which is, which is what? 15213. Why 1? It shouldn't be 1. It cannot be 1. Okay, so S is 4, and also I have last mark, six, last mark six, 6, which is 2 and 1. Ye but this is not correct, because, because it is not. Ah, our set is seven. Ah, I shouldn't use. Oh no. So last mask should be. Should be our set.
great. I have some time. Let's try 10. Again. Guys, why? I hate it. Okay, and what did I say? I said six five five one three three. But six, six is not neighbor of ah okay. But this is this is not correct. So why did I wrote, wrote this nonsense? Write this nonsense. Oh, I have so little time. So here I said that. Our set is 21, which is okay. So did I construct this? Did I construct this cycle? Two, five, again two, I don't get it, why? Last mask mask is seventeen. Oh, last mask is twenty one, so it's like zero, two, and four. And also five. Yes, it's correct, but why did I? Didn't I print this answer? Why two? Ah, yes, it should be two.
Oh, yeah, I also should break. I should break here. Guys, I'm tired. I'm really tired, but we did it. And this is 231st place. <laughs> oh. Why? Why did guys solve it in 29 minutes or something? 20 minutes. Why, guys? Just why? Oh no. Oh no. Why? 21 minutes. I'm so bad at implementation problems, guys. Thirty nine minutes. Oh, my God. What did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? Again, so I need to analyze this. So uh, we have a graph. We need to check whether there is a cycle, which is near all vertices. How can we solve it? So assume that we chose some subset which will be our cycle. First of all, we need to check that it is near all other vertices, and this is easy. And also, we need to check whether there is a cycle on these and vertices on these vertices. This is kind of hard because because how can we do it? So it's like n cube times 2 to the nth, isn't it? If it is done naively. I just don't understand it. Maybe problem F was an easy one. Again, a graph.
this is not an easy pro uh, this is not a, not a hard problem because the the answer is monotone it decreases always it's also always decreases Okay. Okay, I understand what what was wrong. Not very clever person. Ah. Uh. Fine. So problem A. I think we need a picture. So the answer, as I said there, uh, first I will say the statement. So we have a square field, we have a king in the center, and we want it to be in some other cell. And there are five operations. Go up, go right, go down, go left, and do nothing. And we need to go from here to here, and we do not we are not able to repeat the same operation twice in a row. So firstly, what if it is on one of these four lines? So like, uh, modulo of R equals modulo of mo modulus. Absolute value, I mean, absolute values of like I will write x and y, of x and y are equal. Then we just need two x operations because we just alternate between horizontal and vertical axis. But what happens if uh, it is not at one of these four lines? For example, it's like here. Then we can get here so assume that, for example, this is x-axis, and this is uh, this is x-coordinate little, and this is y-coordinate which is big. Then first of all, we can make these many operations, and we get in this point, which is right under the needed point. And then we need to go here. And if there were no conditions about doing the same operation twice, we could just make it in this many operations. Yes. The problem is we cannot. Uh, first of all, if you think that the first operation from here coincides with the last operation from this diagonal moving, it's not true because we were able to make it horizontal, horizontal, for example, like this. So there, there are two ways to 
move diagonally firstly up and then to the right or first to the right and then to uh, up, upwards to the top and we can choose one of them so that there is no problem with this next move so we need to make more uh, ups y minus ups x uh, vertical moves but after each of them we need to have a rest because otherwise we do the same operation twice in a row so there will be these many moves and between each pair of them we will have a rest so there will be so many rests or minus one and so the answer will be the sum of these two numbers and plus 2x so it will be 2 modulo y minus 1 so if the moduli are equal when I say modulus it is absolute value because in Russian it's the same word so if two absolute values are equal we just take one of them twice else we take the maximum of them twice and subtract one this is the answer why is it optimal? Oh, well, because you can prove that you cannot do faster. In this case, it is easy to prove that you cannot do faster because you just need two, mod uh, two ups x moves. You cannot make less of them. Uh, because the difference of the coordinates by x coordinate is this and by y coordinate is this. And you cannot change the difference by more than one during one step. So you will need at least these many steps and this is equal to this number. What about this estimate? It is also true. Uh, let's prove it. For example, let's assume that uh, for the sake of simplicity that x is greater than y and y is greater than zero. So I want to prove that we need at least two x minus one steps. Now we are here and we want to get somewhere here. And see, during each two steps, you cannot move to the right twice. So you increase your x coordinate by at most one. So first two steps is at most one. The second two steps is also at most one. The uh, next two steps is also at most one. So, the first x minus 1 moves will require at least 2 times x minus 1 moves. And the last one is also plus 1. Why I don't add 2 here? Because uh, we do not continue to walk after it. For example, this is example for... Uh, for x equals 3 and in this example I will not relax so I go to the right and I need to make a spare move then I go to the right and I need to make a spare move so this is one pair and this is a second pair but in the last pair I do not need to make the second spare move I can eliminate it because I have already visited my endpoint. So actually plus one here is enough and we get this estimate. Okay, problem B. Sorry again, I do not have my uh, tablet. So I need to explain it in Microsoft Paint with my mouse. Problem B is simple greedy. So you have several patients. Each patient has a segment of length W during which he can be vaccinated. And also, if you open a pack with vaccines, you have a segment of length d 
during which you can use these rack signs. Okay, so intuitively, the later you open the pack, the better, because because there are just m more opportunities. For example, uh, assume that you have a pack and you healed several patients. Uh, so you cannot open it before this moment. You have to open it before this moment or else this patient won't get the vaccine. So assume that we did it earlier than this moment. Okay. Then just let's move the opening moment to this point. And notice that for each of the rest of the patients, nothing bad happens. If they can be vaccinated, they still can be vaccinated. But what's, what is better is that this border moves to the right and we can, for example, heal someone else. If someone comes at this moment, it is possible that in the previous way of doing it, he wasn't able to be vaccinated because this pack expired earlier, but after we moved the segment to the right, now he can be vaccinated. So we can just open each pack as early as possible, as, as late as possible. This is the first idea. And the second idea is we do not like hmm. we do not open the new pack until the previous pack is fully spent or it is expired. This is also kind of intuitive, so I won't explain it much. But in the end, you just uh, do it greedily. So so what? I will show my code. You store the number of vaccines in current pack and the moment when they expire. So you take a new patient. All patients should be sorted in the order of... Oh, I used the same number twice. I should you should have used here lower case T. Okay, so assume that we are considering the new patient. He should be vaccinated between TI and TI plus W. So between TI and CAN. So if our vaccines expire before TI, this means that we cannot vaccinate this patient and anyone after him with this pack and we need to open the new pack. So we increase ANS. We say that now in current pack there are K vaccines and their expiration moment is CAN plus D because we open them strictly at the moment CAN. So in the end of this patient's possibility of being vaccinated, we open this pack as, la as late as possible. And it's, his expiration is plus D. And after that, we uh, decrement the current pack because we have just vaccinated one person. So nothing special in this problem. Problem C. Oh no, problem E is a disaster. Problem E is a disaster, guys. Oh no. Okay, problem C. Ah, this is a very easy problem. So we have a sector with some numbers on it. And initially it's number X and we need to add F, F minus one, etc. one. 
and it should be uh, pointing at zero. And notice that actually this is modular, modular arithmetics modular n. So when it goes above n minus 1, it becomes 0. So I can write it as follows. This should be equivalent to 0 modular p. OK. So how can, how can we solve it? Uh, the first thing that everyone will likes is when we can ah not modular p sorry p is the some other thing here we should write n and also f should be from one to p the thing about modular operations is that if you have a equivalent to be a modular n and you have some uh, you have some statement about a modular n then it is equivalent to the same statement about b modular n for example if a is equivalent to b and a squared is equivalent to one modular n then the same goes to uh, about b uh, what can be this uh, statement e i was very fast and thought that everything about a modular n can be uh, this statement but actually i was wrong everything about polynomials can be. So if I have some polynomial g with integer coefficients and g of a is equivalent to 0, for example, then I can say that g of b is also equivalent to 0. But if g d d does not have integer coefficients or its coefficients uh, denominator is it, it has some common di divisors with n then this is a problem and I uh, fall, uh, fell in this pit in this problem for example let's take n equals 4 yes And I take f equals 2. And then 1 plus 2 equals 3, which is 3 modular 4. But let's then take f equals 6. So I take numbers from 1 to 6. Then their sum is 21. And this is equivalent to 1 modular 4. Why is that? So this wasn't true in for this statement that uh, something is equivalent to 3. I replaced 2 with 6 and now it is not 3 modulo 4, it's 1 modulo 4. It's because this polynomial is not with integer coefficients. It's actually f times f plus 1 half. And this is a polynomial with rational coefficients. And when these are rational numbers and this denominator 2 is not relatively prime uh, with n, this means that we can have some problems. So in order to fix it, we need to first make this a polynomial with integer coefficients. So we can double this equivalency and we get 2x plus f times f minus 1 plus 1, sorry is equivalent to 0 modular 2n. And now it's OK because this is integer coefficients. So I can apply this statement. And this means that I do not need to iterate over all these numbers. So 
here can be a lot of numbers. P can be up to 10 to the 9th power. But I don't need, do not need most of them, because since uh, So, since I have this uh, statement, I can say that if I have a which is greater than n, then I can, I can replace it with a minus n. And this is also k okay for this statement. So, in this case, the modulus is 2n, so I need to subtract 2n. And here is also 2. So, actually, I do not need any numbers which are greater than 2n. And I only need to iterate f equals 1 to minimum of p and 2n. And if I do it, I either find the answer or find out that there are no answers. So in each case, I just check this condition. And if it is true, then I can... Then I can print my answer immediately. Problem D. Ah, it's an interesting problem. So I have a matrix, a rectangular matrix, and I need, and this is n by m. So I need to divide these m cells into two parts of same size. m halved windows should be in group of one and m over, over two windows should be in group of two. So for example if m equals uh, eight it can look like this. So I divided all my eight elements into groups, into, and four of the elements are in the group of size one, and four of the elements are in group of size two. And the group is lit if there is at least one one. So, for example, this is lit because there are two ones, and this is lit because there are one one and one zero. And if there were two zeros, then it would not be lit. So this is green, this is green. For example, this is zero, 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 one. So here we have unlit, 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 and lit. And we need to either minimize or maximize the number of lead groups and print it. How do we solve it? So basically, if there were no groups of size 2 or some other problems, the number of lead groups will be, would be just the number of ones. Each one is a group when it fails. It fails when we have a group of 1-1, one, one, because it subtracts 1. So actually, when we want to maximize the number of uh, lead groups, we need to make as little, as, as few as possible such groups. And when we need to minimize it, we need as many as possible such groups. And actually, it can be done greedily. So when we maximize, we just go through this array, and when we see two ones, we take a group. When we see two ones, we make a group, etc. And when we do not see two ones, we do not make a group. And in the end, it is possible, so we need m over 4, like domino groups, doubled groups. So if it is less than m over 4, then it means that we will may, uh, need to make some more groups. But it doesn't matter in the case of minimization. So the answer is 
number of ones minus grid greedy number of ones ones and this is for minimization what about maximization in this case we try to make this group either one zero or one or zero zero because each of these uh, ways does not decrease the number of lead groups so uh, as always we make as many such groups as possible greedily and if at some moment we cannot do it uh, it means that uh, i mean we made several groups and now we have less than m over th 4 it means for example k less than less than m over 4 it means that we will have to make all these groups one one and so the answer will be one minus m over four minus k why this greedy strategy works well it's kind of obvious because because of the structure of this problem you see at each moment you have not very much not very many choices you can make a group of size 2 or a group of size 1 and that's it and so it is easy to prove that uh, you you cannot make it more optimally than by greedy strategy okay problem e problem e so in this problem you have a graph just a moment Okay, we have a graph and for each vertex we need to choose the next one. So for each vertex there should be exactly one next vertex, but each vertex can be next for several others. For example, this is possible. But this is not possible, because for this vertex you have two outcoming edges. So you have a graph, and a rated graph, and you need for each vertex to choose some next vertex. And the problem is... The following. This orientation should satisfy the following condition. For every two vertices, for example, these two vertices. Moving by arrows, you should get to some vertex which is neighbor of this one. So for every two vertices, starting in one of them, in each of them actually, starting in first of them, you should be able to reach some neighbor of the second one. And starting with the second one, you should be able to reach some neighbor of the first one. Okay, how to solve this problem? So, when you have these arrows, it's actually a directed graph. And in directed graph, there is always a condensation. What I mean by condensation is there is some subset of vertices such that each vertex uh, I don't need, now I do not mean the whole condensation, I only mean some sync component of this condensation. So what I want to say, in any 
directed graph, there is a subset of vertices such that each vertex can be reached from some from other one in this set. This is called strongly connected component. So in this graph, each two vertices are both reachable from each other, but you cannot reach any other vertex from these vertices. So there is no way to get out of this set from this set. So let's take one of these vertices. I, I, actually, since all outcoming degrees are one, as you see here, this can only be a cycle. So we have some sync cycle. And we cannot get out of this cycle if we have got into one. So, uh, it's possible that you have only one edge and the cycle is like, go here and go back. So maybe a cycle of length two. So, assume that we are on this cycle and we want to get so let's apply our condition to a vertex V on this cycle and vertex U on somewhere else. So this means that we want to get from V to some neighbor of U, but we can only go on this cycle, we cannot leave it. So this means that for any other vertex U, it should be a neighbor of some vertex on this cycle. This means that we found a cycle in our graph, which is neighboring to each other vertex. We have found a cycle which is neighboring to each, which is adjacent to all other vertices. And actually this is the criterion. So let's go in the other way. Assume that we have a cycle which is neighbor to all vertices. In this case, we can move it uh, clockwise, for example, and all other, other vertices are directed here in this cycle. All other edges. No, all other, all, all other vertices. I was correct. So, assume that we did it, and this means that now the, uh, the condition is true. Why? Let's take any two vertices, for example, this and this one. Then we can get from this vertex to the cycle. And since this cycle is neighboring to all vertices, we can find a vertex which is neighbor of this vertex on this cycle. And this means that the condition is true. We were lucky in this vertex turned out to be on this cycle, but it, if it were here, for example, this would, st uh, would st still hold because we can go from here to this vertex and this is neighbor of this one. So, now we have the following problem. Find the cycle in a graph which is neighboring to all vertices. So, I, actually my friends now say that there is a solution n in n times 2 to the nth power asymptotics, but I didn't find it. So, first of all, I found this solution. How do you do it? You make a dynamics over masks. So, for example, dp mask uv. This means uh, one if... So, what is m? m is some subset of the vertices. So, 
there are two to the nth ways of choosing it. U and V are some vertices in this mask. So if there is a Hamiltonian path on M, which starts in U and ends in V. So in particular, U and V are in M. And there is a Hamiltonian path that goes through all vertices of M exactly once. Starts in U and ends in V. And zero otherwise. And this can be easily recalculated. So assume that you know for all little masks about uh, this and we are now in mask M and we want to ch check whether we can go from, from U to V. So let's look at all edges in V. One of them, for example, is here. If we want to traverse via a Hamiltonian path through M from U to V, there should be some last edge to V, for example, W. And this means that we can traverse through M without V from U to W somehow. And then we can add this edge WV. And we can check all these edges in O of N time. So there are 2 to the n times n times n entries in this dynamics and we can find each entry in O of n time. So it's O of n cube times 2 to the n. There are two optimizations that I know. One I uh, thought of during the contest and one my friend said me after the contest. So my optimization was the following. Ah, and so when you do it, in the end you check that there is at least one triple M U V such that the following conditions hold. First of all, U and V are connected. Secondly, and this means that we can form a cycle. Secondly, M is connected to all vertices and that's all so you in the end you check in this time o of 2 to the n times n <coughs> this condition so there are two optimizations and i think each of them is enough my optimizations my optimization was the following so assume that we found some vertex which is indeed on the cycle. Then we do not need to iterate over all possible u's. We can fix one u and that's it. One u on this cycle. You see, you do not need anywhere to ch change your u. So if you know that u is on the cycle, you can just fix it and that's it. The problem is you do not know any vertices on the cycle initially. My way was the following. First of all, let's try u equals the last vertex and minus one. If we do it, we can check it in n times two to the nth power time. Now assume that u is not on this cycle. This means that let's then try u n minus one, n minus two, I mean. And when you do it, Actually, your space of possible M's is less because you do not need to consider sets which contain N minus one. We already understand that N minus one is impossible. So here we have N, N squared here, sorry, N squared times two to the N minus first power. Then if it is also bad, which try N minus three and we have N squared times two to the n minus second power, etc. And this sums up into O of n squared times two to the nth. 
You do not need anything else. Okay, this is my way. And there is some other way by Ivan Safonov. Ivan Safonov, okay. He said that actually uh, I, I, di I didn't use the structure of the problem, but he did use the structure of this problem. So you need a cycle which is neighboring to each edge. This means that for any edge, either this vertex is on the cycle or this vertex on, is on the cycle. So you can choose any of them. You can choose any of them. First of all, U, for example. Let's say, let's try U as the vertex on this cycle. So U is fixed and equal to any endpoint of any edge. Then assume that we failed. This means that we just need to take the second vertex, V. We cannot use the first one, so we just use the second one. And if it also fails, this means that this edge cannot be uh, adjacent to any cycle. Not adjacent, but, but incident. It cannot intersect any cycle just because we tried both of its endpoints and we failed. So it will be like 2 times n squared times 2 to the nth. So there are two ways with this asymptotics and either of them works. The problem is I spent a lot of time writing it. And this is very bad because other guys solved it immediately. Other guys solved it kind of immediately. But what can we do? And this is strange because actually I was kind of... Uh, yes, I'm frustrated this, that this problem took a lot of time, but actually this is nice that I managed to write it uh, eventually. But this is minus 32 because all other guys solved it fast. Moreover, if we look at Umnik, Umnik says that delete rating predictor. And I strongly disagree with him because at, uh, in the end, Rating is not just a number. You track your progress with the rating. It's a useful tool. And if uh, you have a decrease in rating, this means that the system expected high performance from you and you didn't give this performance. This is actually mathematically correct. And so I can make some useful deductions from this rating fall. This means that actually I wasn't able to solve E as good as a lot of other guys did it. This is very clear in this situation. Well, I cannot look into other solution till the end of the contest. Ah, I can. Okay, let's let's look at tourist. Tourist was able to solve it in twenty one minutes. Okay, this is understandable. So if we fix some starting vertex, ah, his idea is same as mine, but he did it very fast, and I did not. Uh, 
Understandable, understandable. Well, thank you for watching. Try to solve problems. And if you do not solve a problem, you should absolve it.